with life, there's death. And lately there's been a lot of death around us. The loss of a loved one or a friend brings with it a measure of grief and mourning. And yet how we handle and process that grief, I believe is connected to a few considerations for us to think about. To include, what is our emotional state at the time of loss? What is our perspective of death? How are we relationally and communally engaged? And what are coping mechanisms? You see, I believe if we are emotionally grounded, lovingly surrounded, and meaningfully unbounded by life-defining philosophies, principles, and people, we would be best equipped to live with and through loss. Two sisters, Martha and Mary, had just lost their brother to an illness. Being closely connected to the community, the sisters sent word to their Lord that their brother was no longer with us. Now that friend desiring to help them in a time of need made haste with the message that Mary and Martha's brother Lazarus, whom the Lord loved, was dead. The sisters and the community grieved for several days more until Jesus arrived. And although they grieved, I believe these sisters were emotionally grounded based upon their faith, their perspective, their support network, and their coping practices. Now, when Jesus arrived, he too wept. He experienced the grief of having lost his friend, as many in the world are experiencing today having lost a loved one or a friend. The Lord cried, although he already knew Lazarus was dead, the Lord wept because he knew that his friends were weeping, although he knew he would rise again. And the Lord grieved because his friends and the community and the sisters were grieving. Today, I believe he still grieves because there are many of us that are sick, dying, and will die. The sisters lived with and through their loss. The question is, how did they do it? I believe they were able to do so with healthy coping practices. You see, even during the time of sickness and before death, Mary and Martha were grounded. They had spiritual disciplines that were derived from their faith, their coping skills, their relational engagement with the community, and an emotionally grounding perspective of what life and death involved. Now, living with and through their loss was by no means easy for Mary, Martha, or Jesus. And by no means does we dismiss the fact that all was well in time with Lazarus, but allow me to engage your mind with a few considerations of what life and death is before and after it takes place. Take note of the sisters' deep faith. Take note of their self-allowance to grieve. Take note of their perspective of death and take note of how they as a family and community were engaged with one another to include their healthy coping practices. In short, they were grounded. Are you? Friends, in 2009 as a Marine officer, I journeyed through the stages of grief having lost my mother. And I'm sincerely thankful for the Lord for his person, his presence, his promises, his perspective, and his peace. I am thankful for my brother and for my family and for my community as the loving support that they provided. And by God's grace, I am thankful that my brother and I were emotionally grounded like these sisters. Yet how about you? How about your family? How are you preparing your heart and mind for the inevitable time of loss? How are you providing your mind with peace, providing perspective, people, and practices that will help you live with and through your loss? Do know that your command chaplain is eager to serve you and support you before and after the loss of a friend or a loved one. Our goal is to equip your heart and mind to live with and through loss. God bless you.